Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. As many of y'all know, I recently built a disc grinder with a chassis from Richard at Beck's Armory. We were talking back and forth on Instagram about tool stands, and I mentioned it would be nice to have this disc grinder on a pedestal stand like my Northridge grinder. Well within 48 hours, Richard had it all drawn up in CAD, and he ordered a couple of prototypes, one of which he sent to me for testing. These beefy stands are available on his website, and I'll leave an affiliate link to them in the description below. If you use referral code at redbeardops, you can get five bucks off your order. There isn't yet a detailed set of plans for this build, but I'm hoping this video can be used as a guide. To be honest, this build is pretty self-explanatory. You start off by laying out and lining up the two base plates and four lower side plates. These lower plates are designed to be used not only as gussets for the bottom plates, but also as fences to hold concrete if the user desires a heavier stand. I am one of those users, and you'll see the addition of sealant and concrete later in the build. After I get the plates all tacked into the right place, I put full welds on the keyways going through the base plates. Just to have everything nice and flush, I'm using my 7 inch angle grinder to clean up these welds. In reality, the only ones that need to be flush are the welds close to where the casters will be mounted. I then moved on to welding up the square upright. I'd recommend having a clamp on hand when mocking up this upright, otherwise it tends to come apart on you. I use my fireball squares to make sure the upright is square with the base plates before tacking it into place. There are two cool features about the stand to point out here. One is that the upright is offset so that the user doesn't bump his feet into the stand when using the disc grinder, and two is that there are keyholes along the sides that are designed to accept carriage bolts. While I didn't mess with them during this build, they could be used for various attachments, and I thought this was a nice touch from Richard. The next section is the internal pillar. This pillar slides inside the upright so as to give the user adjustable heights and also capture those carriage bolts we were just talking about. I didn't do it on my build because I didn't think to do so, but this would have been an ideal time to weld in the eight nuts that will be utilized to attach this pillar to the upright. Just make sure they are flush with the outside so as not to impede the travel of the pillar. I ended up going with a different route later in the build that was just as strong of a solution, but would be difficult to take apart in the future. As a side note, I purchased this 7 inch angle grinder from Harbor Freight to use in my Damascus billets, and I've been loving it for other projects like this one as well. It makes short work of grinding off these welds. The last major component we need to weld up is the base plate for the disc grinder chassis. The base plate is specifically designed for Beck's Armory machines, however, it could easily be modified to accept many other tools by drilling a few extra holes. I can see myself getting another one of these stands in the future for additional 2x72 belt grinders, disc grinders, buffers, or the like. Before we pour this base full of concrete, we need to weld in our fasteners for the casters. Note if you forget this step, you really don't have any good options for affixing your casters other than doing so with one of the four bolts missing. Now I'm sure there are lots of ways to skin this cat, but I figured it would make sense to put down a sealant before pouring in concrete, since concrete retains moisture and could rust the stand over the years. I used some Gorilla waterproofing rubber sealant for this purpose. I started off trying to brush it on, but ended up just pouring the entire 16 ounce container into the base. Per Richard's suggestion, I ordered these four inch casters off of Amazon and they are rated to 2000 pounds. I'll put an affiliate link to them in the description of this video since they are working great for this application and seem like a darn good bargain. I attached them to the base with the provided hardware. As a side note, I used extra long fasteners for the ones I welded since I was waiting on the casters to come in the mail. That's why you see me cutting them off here. At this point, I want to get my pillar situated. In my case, I don't plan on ever varying the height of my stand and will be using the stand at its max height which works out to around 3 feet. Since I didn't weld in my bolts, I decided to try a little hack to hold them in place while I tighten up the pillar using some super glue. This ended up working out pretty darn well. I used some tape to hold them in place flush with the pillar, then dripped some super glue into the gaps before spraying that super glue with Starbond adhesive accelerant. Once I got all eight nuts in the pillar, I slid it into the upright and ran the bolts in from the outside. It's around this part of the process that I'm realizing how beefy of a stand this is going to be since in all practicality it would work well as it is if I stopped here. But heck, why not make it even heavier and beefier? I mixed up a bag of Pro Finish 5000 in a 5 gallon bucket, then poured it into the base. There's no rocket science with this step here, 
and depending on the bag you're using there will be different sets of instructions for mixing the specific cement you choose. But let's be honest, who actually reads instructions on cement bags? I just poured in some water till it looks right. After the cement cured, I attached my grinder to the stand with some quarter 20 fasteners. Now, I didn't take any footage of me making this bracket for my VFD, but know that these two pieces are not included with the kit. I just had these pieces of steel in my scrap bin from a friend's disassembled piece of fitness equipment. I know you guys are super ingenuitive and could probably think up of a pretty cool attachment to hold the VFD with the keyholes on the side of the stand. This, however, was the best I can come up with on the fly. So major thanks to Richard for sending me this stand for testing. I've been using this stand for the last couple of weeks and have been loving it so far. When I lock all of the casters into place, it's plenty stable for my application and I like being able to move it around my small shop. As a final side note, I know that this video won't be quite as popular as my normal knife builds. However, I feel like videos like this one still hold value since many of y'all are setting up equipment in your knife making shops. It always helps me to get ideas when I see how others have their equipment set up in their shop, so I'm hoping this helps someone out when getting their shop situated. With that, I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Thank you.